Welcome to our virtual audience. I'm Bishop John T. Leslie, Jr., pastor of this church, Church of Jesus Christ. We are so glad that you chose this branch of Zion in which to worship today. Thank you so much for your support. We are in this business of saving souls because the soul that is saved is going to be blessed of God. God bless you and thank you again for being a part of our service. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much for being in the house of worship one more time. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness, Lord. Thank you for how you brought us over the highway safely. You've kept us, oh God. You protected us, Lord. You healed our bodies, oh God. And we come to say thank you. We come to lift up your name, Jesus. We come to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Oh, Father, we pray that you will bless our bishop and pastor, Bishop John T. Leslie Jr. and Lady Louise. Oh, God, and our assistant pastor, District Elder Robert Taylor and Lady Taylor. The text is St. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. May the Lord a blessing to the reading of his holy word.
my, my, my. And come on, let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Praise him wherever you are. Come on, let's lift the up. The Lord is my life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I feel a praise coming on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's offering time at the Church of Jesus Christ. Praise God. We praise God for you, you, and you that have given down through this time. Praise God of coronavirus. The Lord has been a blessing to us, and we have in turn blessed him with our offerings. Praise God. The Bible says, Prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. If I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Praise God. Even though you're not in the sanctuary, you can give. Praise God. Go to our webpage and look for the various avenues that you can donate. Take out Givelify. Amen. And send your offering. We would certainly appreciate it. If you don't have a church home, please feel free to make this your home. In Jesus' name. Thank you.
together and give God some praise in the house. I'll praise him with my hands. Hey, come on. I'll praise him in the dance. I'll praise him with my voice. Oh. That's my choice. Do you have anything to praise the Lord about today? If you do, why don't you give God some praise? Why don't you give him some glory? He's been so good. He's been so kind. He gave us another day. He's a friend of mine. Give him praise. Oh, give him praise today. The Lord has been so good, he's been so kind. Glory! Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Even in your homes. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Oh, give him the glory, give him the power. Give him the honor. He's worthy to be praised. I said the Lord is worthy to be praised. He's worthy. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you today. But I thank God for another day. The songwriters say he didn't have to do it. But he did it anyway. He could have left us out there all alone. But Jesus didn't do that. He reeled us in. He saved our souls. He made us whole. And right now, I owe him the praise. I owe him the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some more praise today. Shout out. Feeling real churchy in here today. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh God, we give honor to the Spirit of the Lord this afternoon. And amen. It is He who have made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Amen. We do honor our pastor and bishop, the Honorable Dr. Bishop John T. Leslie Jr. And to that great and lovely woman that stands beside him, sister, the first lady of the Church of Jesus Christ, Lady Louise Leslie. Amen. And to the great people of God, again, we say praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad that the Lord is in charge of everything. I'm so glad that, amen, this, this is the day that he has made. And Amen. I'm not going to contemplate. I'm not going to find myself in a dilemma as to not knowing what to do. But this is the day that he has made and I will rejoice. In spite of, I will rejoice. And I will be glad in it. In the name of the Lord, we do honor even our music department this afternoon under the dynamic direction of the doctor, the maestro. Professor Wilbur Belton Jr. Amen. To the great singers of here at the Church of Jesus Christ, no. Absolute wonderful musicians. 
Amen. We do honor them this afternoon. And amen to the great people of God that are out there in virtual church, social media. We say praise the Lord, everybody. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up. But thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. And it is a fact that it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And because his compassions fail not, but they're new every morning, great is the faithfulness of God. Man, we're so honored to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah to Jesus. Somebody once testified and said, after being here, amen, after being saved from our many sins, the Lord has counted us worthy, amen, to see another day and to save us. In Jesus' name. Amen. This afternoon, I want you to invite your attention to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40. Isaiah, chapter number 40. That great eagle-eyed prophet. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40, I'll begin reading in your hearing verse number 28 down to and including verse number 31. The Bible says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And from this passage of scripture I'd like to use for a thought this afternoon in these words, power struggle. Power struggle. Power struggle. Man, this great book of Isaiah, this eagle-eyed prophet, is like a miniature Bible. The first 39 chapters deals with, uh, like the third, first 39 books of the Old Testament. It deals with that old covenant, that old economy under the auspices of primarily Moses. And filled with judgment upon immoral and adulterous men. In this book of Isaiah, Isaiah is prophesying during the days of King Uzziah, King Hezekiah, King Ahaz, kings of Judah. And during these, the times of these monarchs, Isaiah is where he got the vision and got the call upon his life to go and tell the world, tell Israel, tell Judah what thus saith the Lord. And we find him in the sixth chapter of this same book of Isaiah as he goes to the temple. He goes there and while he's there, he sees some things that he had not ordinarily seen before. He sees the building shaking. He sees uh, the angels that are flying around the building, flying around the temple. He sees the Shekinah glory of God. He says that the train of the Lord filled the temple. And he asked the question, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips. But the question was asked to Isaiah, who shall go for us and who shall I send? Isaiah said, here am I, send me. And he was one that answered the call of the Lord to go and tell the story. Tell the story of Calvary even about what was about to come. And he even dealt with them right there in their present. Because Judah, if you remember, had gone down into Babylonian captivity. They were headed there. And they would be down there for 70 years. And during that time of, of, of consecration, and during that time of insulation, they would be uh, under the guise of the Babylonian kingdom. It was here where Isaiah, he commanded the people of God, if you don't straighten yourselves up and, and get yourselves right, that you're going to go down like your sister went down. A hundred years earlier, uh, the kingdom of Israel, that northern kingdom, went down into Assyrian captivity. 
And so God is pleading with Judah, Judah, straighten up, get it together. Because the time is coming, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're headed down the same path that your sister Israel is headed. And so Isaiah, he begins to speak to the nation of Judah. He begins to tell them what thus saith the Lord. And he tells them, though your sins be as scarlet, God gave them a promise that he was going to make them white as wool. Though they be dyed like crimson, I'm going to bring them white as snow. And so even though they did wrong and they disobeyed God, God did not leave them without a promise that he was going to restore them back to the place where they once knew him, God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. It's wonderful to know that you have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ the righteous. It's good to know that uh, if you fall in sin, and then in some cases, or I should say most cases, when you fall in sin, it's good to know that you have somebody who's able to get you out of that place and put you back in reconciliation with the Almighty God. And so these first 39 chapters of Isaiah, they deal with uh, Israel and Judah's uh, sin and deal with their disobedience to the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen to God. But beginning with chapter number 40, he says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Speak ye comfortably to the children of Judah. Let them know, let them know that I have not forgotten about them. Many times when uh, God does not give us a right now answer, we think that God has forgotten. But God does not uh, have a lapse in his memory. He does not have amnesia. He, uh, he does not forget things, but he remembers everything. And that's why we got to be careful how we live in front of God, because he does not forget anything. And when we think God has forgotten, amen, keep in mind that God does not and has not forgotten anything. In here, this uh, 40th chapter of Isaiah, my God from Zion, amen, the prophet here to wait on the Lord, amen, is contrasted with the prophet's mind of, with watching the current events, watching, 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 and that's what we're doing right now, we're watching the current events. Because the world at that time, and, uh, and we can relate, we, we can relate this story with what's happening with us today because it's very relevant, amen, to what's happening in our world today. But the time, amen, in which Isaiah's prophesying, the, the world was rocking under the campaign of Cyrus. Cyrus was that king of the Persians. He's the one that went in, amen, to God and got victory over uh, the Median kingdom, the Medium empire. And the Median empire got victory over the Babylonian Empire. And the Babylonian Empire is the one, amen, the God that was raised up and given that vision by God through the King Nebuchadnezzar that there were going to be empires that would come upon the scene in the earth, but in the, in the final analysis of it all, that there was going to be another kingdom which was going to be an everlasting kingdom in which God himself was going to hew out of the mountain without hands that was going to roll down the streets of Babylon and tear down the kingdoms of the world. That was the kingdom of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah to Jesus. That was the kingdom in which Jesus is going to come and reign on this earth for a thousand years, if you please. My God from Zion. And so the world at this time, they're rocking under the campaign of King Cyrus. Hallelujah to God and the neighbors, their neighbors and the Jews themselves kept asking the question, what's next? Amen. God, have you asked that question to yourself today? My God, of the things that are going on in our world, have you asked yourself the question, have you been in conversation with anyone to determine and to declare, amen, to God, ask them what's next? What else is going to happen? What else, amen, to God, can America stand? How much more can we take? Hallelujah to Jesus. My God, but I'm so glad that my hope is not in this world nor in this world's systems. My hope is not in the United States government. My hope is not in my God the nation of Israel but my hope is in the almighty God it is in him in which we live move and have our being and so my God my hope is in the Lord Lord have mercy amen to God I heard the Bible when it says amen to God it says why are thou so disquieted within me talking about my soul my God but amen the reverberation of that answer came back and said amen 
and my hope is in the Lord and in him am I putting my trust can you say hallelujah and so people of God amen to God and so we're asking the question what's next my God to this Bible's invariable answer the living God that's what's next amen to God he's the one that's in charge and the one that's in control my God the answer however never comes back amen from the events themselves but rather it comes back in terms of the ex the advent of God amen God takes to carrying advents and he proclaims claims what the next advent of his is going to be. Amen to God. The current events don't determine and dictate to God. Amen. What God is going to do but God is in control of everything. Hallelujah to God. The current events. God, my God, it didn't take him by surprise. Amen to God. He, it didn't, it, those things were not hidden from the Lord. My God, because God is the almighty God. He knows everything and he has all power in heaven and earth and under the earth in his hand can you say hallelujah, hallelujah. And so the answer, however, people of God never comes from the events in themselves. Amen to God. There are rather there be a bright spots. There are bright spots that are on the horizon. And even in the darkest of days, every now and then we see the Lord working. We see the hand of the Lord moving. Amen. Even in the darkest of times. Hallelujah to God. But look at what God is doing here. Hallelujah to God. Those bright spots, spots that we see on the horizon. Amen. And these are not of such size of brilliance as to lift the spirits, amen, the pitch of noble adventure, but rather, amen, the God we have expectantly received, amen, and looking for God to do some things, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for God, and I'm looking at the Lord as what he's doing today, hallelujah to God, and I'm asking the Lord, amen, the God, Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it without me, hallelujah to God, let me know, let me know, show us a sign, show us something. Yeah. Amen. I'm not asking the question as the Jews did to show them a sign. Hallelujah. Because Jesus said the Jews seek after sign and the Greeks after wisdom. I'm not asking that kind of question. I'm just simply saying, Lord, don't let this thing be hidden from us. I know that, my God, you said, amen, amen, with the prophet. Amen. That you do nothing except you reveal it to those who are your prophets. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. The God of and I know, I know there are a whole lot of people in the world today who claim and declare, eh, amen, that they are prophets of God, eh, amen to God, but all of the prophets I ever heard, they always want to tell you eh, how you're going to be prosperous, how you're going to receive some prosperity, eh, amen, but the prophets that I read in scripture, they tell you what your sin is, eh, my God, they declare to you what your sin is, eh, and what, my God, God is about to do concerning your sin. People of God, we got to get this thing right. Hallelujah to God. I want to know. I want to ask the question. Amen. How many of you out there in social media land? How many of you out there? Whether you're looking by way of YouTube or, my God, Facebook Live or, amen, looking by way of streaming. How many of you out there, amen, have earnestly repented of your sins? Hallelujah to God. No, you didn't commit no wrongdoing. Amen. But because you live in this country, hallelujah, how many of you have declared to God, Lord, we have sinned against you. Hallelujah to God. That's what Daniel did while he's down in Babylonian captivity and at the end of the 70 years. Daniel knew it was time for them to come out of captivity and to go back to their hometown, their homeland. Amen. But Daniel in his prayer, my God, as he looked toward the east. Hallelujah to God. He said, Lord, we have sinned. My God, and brought this thing upon ourselves. Amen. No, Daniel did not sin because the Bible tells us that Daniel had another spirit. Amen. That God was pleased with. Lord, have mercy. But people of God, it's a power struggle. 
It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Amen. But we got, amen, that God, everything that we need to conquer. We have everything that we need to get victory. Lord, have mercy. And so those who turn expectantly toward God, amen, they discover that occurrences are not bare events. Amen. But rather advents of the everlasting God. In other words, God is using these current events, amen, to work out his purposes and plan and the overall advent because God is in control hallelujah to God did you hear what I said I said God is in control and even the early church amen to God they were possessed with the same mentality hallelujah to God which unhappily have ceased to be in the mind of us amen to God us contemporary Christians hallelujah to God we think everything come on a flowery bed of ease. Hallelujah to Jesus. We have not really struggled. We have not really, amen, been under the pressure of the pain. Amen, the God of the day's times. Amen. Hallelujah to God. This thing today, COVID-19, if you please, amen, is causing us to define who we are. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Are you still strong in the Lord and in the power of his might? Or are you ready to throw in the towel and cash in your hand. Lord, have mercy. Amen. That's God. I said today's events, these current events that we're dealing with today. Amen. They're causing us to find out who we are. Amen. Are you still a child of God? Amen. The God, are you still in the master's hand? Are you still living in and by the will of God? Hallelujah to God. Are you, are you talking like the world is talking? My God, they're living day by day as if nothing is really happening. Hallelujah to God and we know that is the truth because, amen, we see all these crowds that are gathering ground. Amen, they don't have any face mask on. Lord, have mercy. They don't believe the word of the, the, of the medical field. Amen, they don't believe, my God, that this thing is still fluid. Amen to God, but they think they can go on business as as usual, my God, but God, amen, is going to show up and he's going to show off, hallelujah to God, I don't know how long God is going to keep this thing around, amen, I don't know how long we're going to be able to do virtual church, I don't know how long, my God, God, my God is going to withhold, my God, his mercy upon us, but one thing I do know, my God from Zion that God is the almighty God and the question was asked by God whom shall you liken me unto amen who out there who my God in heaven and earth is like me amen God said I stand alone I'm in a class all by myself Lord have mercy my God God said if there is another God I don't even know him but there's none beside me my God there's none beneath me and there's certainly none above me I am God I'm the Lord and that is my name my God who shall you liken me unto the answer comes back rhetorically nobody There's nobody like our God. Hallelujah to Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. My God, I used to love singing that song. And I still sing along with it every now and then when I hear it. Nobody like Jesus. My God from Zion. And so look at what God says. Hallelujah to Jesus. My God, he says the workmen melt to the graven image. And the goldsmith spread it it over with gold and cast his silver chains he that is impoverished that he had not oscillation chooses a tree that will not amen that will not rise he seeketh unto him a cunning workman amen to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved God said you're doing all kinds of things you're molding 
began making all kinds of images <laughs> trying to figure out who I am <laughs> but you will never figure out who God is because <laughs> God is the almighty God <laughs> he says to whom would you liken me <laughs> or shall I be equal with <laughs> my God said the holy one <laughs> and it seems to me <laughs> that the holy one <laughs> is Jesus Christ of Nazareth <laughs> my God Jesus like I told you <laughs> my God he is not the third person in the Godhead <laughs> but my God he is <laughs> the almighty <laughs> the eternal wonder <laughs> he is <laughs> amen the arms of the Lord <laughs> Jesus is <laughs> the express image <laughs> of the invisible God <laughs> Jesus is all the God <laughs> that we ever going to see and he calls himself the Holy One, the Holy One of Israel. He said, lift up your eyes on high and behold, he that created these things, that bringeth out their host by number, he calleth them all by names. My God, by the greatness of his might, hallelujah, for he, for that he is strong in power. My God, not one of them faileth. When God put the stars in space and put the moon and sun up in the heavens, my God, he commanded a thing, and they're doing everything that he commanded them to do. My God, every day the sun rises. Whether you see it or not, it comes up. Every evening the sun sets. And whether you see it or not, it goes down. Amen. The stars of heaven. My God from Zion. Amen. The moon. Amen. The planets. God put them there. And they're doing just what God said for them to do. From the very beginning, even out to now and hereafter. My my God, so God is a wonder, and he has all power, and all God has to do is speak a word, and he has to obey his voice. All God has to do is speak a word, and he has to do what he said. My God from Zion. Hallelujah to God. So yes, the early church, we possess that same mentality. And we're asking questions today. Hallelujah, what's next? Amen, Lord, what are you going to do next? How much more can the United States take? Amen, for that matter, how much more can the world take? Hallelujah to God. God knows, amen, what it takes for us to come to our knees. Amen, he wants some neology. Amen, out of the church and out of the world. He wants the church to be sure that we know who he is. He wants the church to be sure my God, that we're on the right path. Lord, have mercy. So he asked the question, has thou not known, has thou not heard that God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not. Lord, have mercy. God is not confined by time and space because he's the eternal God. Lord, have mercy from everlasting to everlasting. God is God. Amen. You can't put God in a box. You can't confine God. My God, if you got him in a box, he's really not there because God is doing what God wants to do. Hallelujah to God. But our little mentality and our little thinking think we can put God in a box. No, God is not going to override your will. But God says, if you let me be God in your life, my God, I'll show you what I can do in your life. I'll show you. Hallelujah to God. There's more to me than what you will ever see, says the Almighty God. Hallelujah to God. You can't put me in a box. Hallelujah to God. You can't box me in. You can't tie me up. Hallelujah to God. Bishop Bell one day preached a, preached, preached a message. Untie God's hands. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. You might think you'd untie God's hands, but you can't tie God's hands. 
hallelujah to Jesus. Amen to God. Yet it is this waiting period and this waiting mentality that increases of strength. Amen. That is promised to God. These are times that literally are trying men's souls. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. These are times that will define who we really are. Not just individually, but as a church triumphant. These are times that will try us. Amen. The God the prophet anticipated the effects of this increase of strength. Hallelujah. The first response to the realization. Amen. That their God was at hand in these shattering victories. That God was at hand. Amen. In making possible their liberations. Amen. From the Persian government. Amen. That God was at hand. Amen. That would be an enthusiastic upsurge. Amen to God. But God asked the question. Have you not known? Amen. Don't you know who your God is? Lord, have mercy. Amen. Don't you care who your God is? My God from Zion. We serve the God of heaven. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. Amen. The God of Israel. Our God is Lord of beginning and of end. And he is sovereign through the intervening ages. That's who the God that we serve is. The words everlasting and creator. They appear together purposely because both express the fundamental character of the divine sovereignty of God. Hallelujah to God. So have you ever known, have you heard that the God, the everlasting Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he faints not neither is he weary but he gives power hallelujah to Jesus to the faint and to them that have no might he increases their strength it is a fact that even the youth they shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Hallelujah to Jesus. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Even the youth shall be weary. Hallelujah to Jesus. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. David asked a question one time, or he made a statement. David said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Therefore, wait upon the Lord. And be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Amen. This afternoon, this afternoon, if you're struggling, if you're down in the dumps, if you don't know which way to turn, rest assured in this fact that God sees where you are. God knows how to take pressure and pain that has evaded your life, my life, and turned it into power. And so that power struggle that we are going through, that power struggle that seems like an unmatched foe, God knows how to give us the victory. He knows how to relieve us of the pain and the pressure that, that surrounds us. And so we don't have to give in as saints of God, as Christians of the Most High God. We don't have to give in to this pain and this pressure. But the Lord wants us totally and equivocally to rest in Him. And so today if you're struggling, if you find yourself depleted of power, depleted of faith in God then today 
you can be restored. You can get back to the place that you once were in God. God is looking for no less than a broken and contrite heart. If you give the Lord your time, if you give him the efforts that you're expending, need you not just today but I need you every day I need you to strengthen me I need you to encourage and comfort me Lord I just need you yes sometimes things seem like they might be too hard to bear but through it all God knows how to give us deliverance for the songwriter said if I never had a problem I wouldn't know whether or not God could solve them. But all of these things have happened so that God can see that the faith that I have in him is really real. And if you have not been born again of the water and of the spirit, if you're not saved, if you have not been baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not been filled with heaven's best, and that is the tongue talking Holy Ghost, Amen. I invite you to come. Call the number that's on your screen. Text us, email us. Amen. Get in contact with us. Let us know what you need from the Lord. And we'll certainly make good on whatever you need from God. If it's in his will, God, I believe we'll do it for you. So let us take advantage of this time and let us take advantage of these different platforms that we are able to to be on hallelujah to god and while we're not in the physical church let us take advantage of everything that god has for us right now let us do let us be what the lord has called us to be and this power struggle that you're going through amen even saints of god goes through power struggles hallelujah to jesus but there's a remedy there's a remedy amen let's build ourselves up in our most holy faith praying in the holy ghost let us pray father in the mighty name of jesus lord we thank you for those oh god who are looking this afternoon father we're asking you oh god to visit each and every home whatever the need is in that home lord god you have the power you have the ability to address every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, stretch forth your nail-scarred hands of Calvary. Oh God, heal that one that is sick. Raise that one that is dead. Give sight to the blind and unstop the deaf ears. Set at liberty the soul that is captive. Undo the heavy burdens and loose the bands of wickedness. And destroy every yoke. Father, address it. Do it for him, Jesus. Oh God, we will thank you. We will give your name the praise. The honor and the glory belongs to you. This we ask in the powerful and adorable name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. That everyone say amen. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. If you're rapture ready, say amen. amen. If you're looking for his coming, say amen. amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. In the name of Jesus is our prayer. God bless you in Jesus' name.